Hey everyone, Live It Like Lisa here, back with another Trash to Treasure video for you guys. Today we're going to create some of these cute little decor pieces uh, using some Kmart and thrifted finds and hopefully I can show you guys just how easy it is to transform something that's a little bit ugly into something much more desirable. So let's get started. So our first project is this apothecary tray. Uh, this tray I actually picked up from Kmart a little while ago and it was galvanized. It attracted my eye because I just immediately thought farmhouse, have to have it, but I bought it and just never ever used it. So uh, I probably did use it maybe the first year I got it in some Christmas decor, but other than that, I just never really used it. So I thought time for it to go. I'm not going to keep it in my house any longer. So we're going to give this a makeover and hopefully I can resell it. So we're going to start by get, getting rid of the label. That would be a start. <laughs> And then I'm going to give it a couple of coats of chalk paint. And the colour I'm using is, I think it's called Linseed. It's an old colour that I had from projects ages ago. And I've just mixed a bit of Plaster of Paris in it to create my own chalk paint. And I'm going to paint the whole tin in, I think I gave it two coats of the Linseed all up, inside and out. So once that's completely dry, I used my silhouette cutting machine to cut out this apothecary uh, decal that I downloaded from the Silhouette Studio and we're going to be using this as an actual stencil. But we're doing like a reverse stencil. So we're going to stick the letters on and then we're going to paint over the whole thing in a darker brown and then we're going to peel the letters off to reveal that linseed colour underneath. So I'm just measuring it here to make sure that I've got it centred and reasonably in the middle. Uh, and then we're going to adhere those letters to the tray and then paint straight over the top. So before I paint over the top of them, I just want to make sure that they're completely stuck down because we definitely don't want any bleed through. And if you're a little bit worried about bleed through, you can always go over these with a coat of the linseed colour first. So the colour that your tray is, you can always go over with that colour first to help seal the edges in and then go over it with your darker colour. I didn't actually do that with this one, but other projects I've done it and it works out perfectly. I'm just making sure when I'm going over those letters, I'm not dragging the paint too hard. I'm just sort of lightly sweeping it across. And, and then I think I go in with a more pushing type technique to, yeah, just to make, you just don't want any of this dark brown bleeding through underneath your letters, that's all. So as long as your letters are stuck down fine, it should be fine. So we're going to paint the whole of the inside of this the tray with this chocolate. It's like a chocolate color. I think it's actually called black caviar, the color of this. And it's like a very black sort of brown or a very dark sort of chocolatey color. I really like it. So yeah, I've painted a few furniture pieces in my son's room with this color and it's really nice. So yeah, we're going to paint all the inside of this tray with this dark color as well as over the letters and then we'll wait till it dries and then we're going to peel all the letters up to hopefully reveal that linseed color underneath. Okay so once that's completely dry we are now going to pull up all the letters that we originally stuck down and this now as you can see is going to reveal that linseed color underneath. Now I went with a bit of a rust, a more of a rustic finish on the inside of this tray so it's not like a perfectly coated tray because we're going to be going in and distressing it anyway so as you can see along the sides there the paint is not like completely covering the tray um, it depends what look you're after I definitely wanted a more of a rustic look to this so um, yeah I didn't want to put too much of the heavy paint on just in order to take it all off again once I start distressing it so yeah, this is the fun part now, is revealing all of that nice, lovely linseed colour underneath. So now I'm just going to go in with some sandpaper and just rough up all of those edges and also over the words as well, just to give them a more aged look and, you know, 
we want it to look like it's authentic and vintage so um, yeah we're just going to do a bit of distressing all over it now no matter what you tell yourself I should have known that we could We could never be friends I hear you just thought we could But we could never be friends And here is the finished tray. I'm really, really loving the way this turned out. And I'm so tempted to just keep this one for Halloween. I just think it will be so perfect for Halloween. But I just like, nah, nah. I can always make another one. I can always just make a wooden board and do it on a wooden board. It'll be perfect. So nah, it's going. It's leaving my house. <laughs> so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out. So yeah, that's the first project. Now let's get started on project number two. So the next little project are these two tiny little pots that I found at my local thrift store. Now these are definitely gonna be staying with me. I absolutely adore them. And these were super, super easy to create. So let's just jump straight into this one. So this is what they started off looking like. And when I saw them in the thrift store, I just absolutely loved the shape of them. I thought they were so cute. And yeah, I've been wanting to give these a makeover for the longest time. So today's the day. We are going to um, start by giving these a couple of coats of chalk paint, my trusty chalk paint. Nearly every project I do starts with me coating it into some white chalk paint. So I think I ended up giving these about two coats of chalk paint and then I go over the chalk paint with a stone color paint. It's like a bit of an off-white because I didn't want these to be stark white. Uh, I wanted them to have that uh, sort of a croc kind of color to them. So yeah, once the chalk paint dried, we went over that with a stone color. We could never be friends I hear you just thought we could before I went over it with the stone colour, I just used some fine sandpaper and just smoothed out the finish on these with the sandpaper just to get rid of any kind of rough paint marks and paint strokes on it just to smooth it all out a little bit. And now you can see this is the colour we're going to go over them with. And this one is called Pebble, I believe. So you can see it's kind of like an off-white and hopefully that's going to give me that croc look to the jug and to the little pot. I should have known that we could, we could never be friends. I hear you. So once the paint has completely dry, we're then going to adhere our decals or our labels to the pots using the tissue paper technique. So what that basically is, I've explained it in my previous video and I'll leave a link to that video down below. But I just went on to, I think it was graphicsfairy.com where I found these uh, labels and I print them out on to some tissue paper. So you stick the tissue paper to a regular printer sheet with some sticky tape at the very top. Feed it through your printer as per normal and print out these labels onto the actual tissue paper. So you want to leave these to dry completely before attempting to stick them on. So leave them a good couple of hours to dry. And then just using either some Mod Podge or I've just used regular PVA glue, we're going to stick our labels on to the little jug and onto the little pot and with you using tissue paper it is that fine and that delicate that it just melt like it, it almost melts into your pot so you can't even really see where the label starts and finishes by the time you're finished so you want to just use very gentle dabbing motions 
to make sure that that label has got a lot of PVA glue or Mod Podge on top and allow it to dry and do the same for the next label. I like to also cut it out as close to the image as possible just so you don't have a lot of overhang um, so that yeah if the label does sort of show it's very very minimal. So we're going to let these two dry and then we're going to start on our next little project which is the tray, the farmer's market tray. So this little tray again it was a Kmart purchase, one of those Kmart impulse purchases. I just seen it, it looked cute, I had to have it and then just never ended up using it. So it's just a little bamboo tray and we're going to start by giving this a couple of coats of what do you think, guys? <laughs> White chalk paint. Nothing or something and now it's drastic. Okay, so after about two coats of chalk paint, once it's all dry, we're now going in with some sandpaper and just distressing it. So I'm concentrating mainly on all around the edges, around the handles, and just pulling off some of that paint to give it a more rustic look. We're so done. So for the bottom of the tray I have used my silhouette to cut out a farmer's market decal and we're going to attach that to the bottom of the tray. So once the decal has been stuck down, I'm just going over it with some PVA glue or Mod Podge just to give it a little bit of protection and to help stick all those letters down. So here are the last two projects all complete. I just think they look absolutely adorable. I am definitely keeping the two little pots for my own collection and the farmer's market tray I am going to resell. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way they've turned out. So let's get started with the next couple of projects. So this little utensils milk can I picked up from Kmart before we even built this house that we're living in because I just knew it was going to have to be in my decor and I already gave it a really budget makeover before with just a bit of dry chalk paint over the top. So now we're going to completely transform it into an actual milk can looking milk can rather than a utensils holder. So guess what guys we're going to start this transformation with two coats of chalk paint. <laughs> White chalk paint no less. So once the chalk paint has completely dry, I'm going to use a very fine grit sandpaper and just go over it lightly just to smooth out the paint finish because chalk paint can be a little bit rough in texture. So just to give it a bit more of a smoother finish, I'm just going to go over it gently with some fine sandpaper and that will just smooth out any of the brush strokes and any rough patches on the milk can. So here you can see now, now that I've smoothed out the paint finish, I'm actually going in and distressing it a little bit along some of those edges and around the milk can itself. So really you ain't gonna hit me back, yeah. Now it's all just you got me on blast, yeah. And this time I've used my Cricut to cut out this little decal that I'm going to be sticking on the front of the milk can. I've been done. We're so toxic, can't get enough. Ooh, I'll go and say it like to finish this one off, I'm just going to go around the edge of the milk can opening with some black acrylic paint, just to give it that uh, enamel kind of look to it. I should have known that we could 
So before we show you the final reveal of the milk can, we'll get stuck into this little crate first. So guess what, guys? <laughs> Two coats of white chalk paint we're going to do. <laughs> I promise they're not all going to be white chalk paint projects. I've got a few that I'm just in the process of doing now that I'm using some greens and blues and like a beige color as well similar to the apothecary tray so yeah we will be doing other colors i promise <laughs> and again once the paint is all dry we're gonna distress this as well so i'm just distressing around the edges just to give it that really worn look as if it's been around for years and years <laughs> and then we're going to put another little cricket design decal on the front of this as well just thought we could but we could never be friends oh. we could never be friends oh. so i'm just keeping this one pretty simple we've just got farmhouse local and we're going to stick these onto each of those little crate slats now this little crate is staying with me uh, if I was reselling it, I would be painting the bottom as well, just to give it a more finished look. But um, yeah, I'm keeping this one in my stash, so I'm not really too fussed about it, really. So here are these two items all finished now and I'm so happy with the way they look. These are both going to be staying in my house. I've already got a spot for them and they're already being displayed and yeah I just absolutely love them. And if you don't have a Cricut machine or cutting machine you can always use the tissue paper technique where you just print out these images on some white tissue paper and then just stick them down onto your item with some Mod Podge or PVA glue. So yeah, I do hope you give these a go. Like if, if you've got some stuff at home that you want to give makeovers to, just give them a go. It's so easy, guys. So now let's go on to the very last project for this video. So for our last item, again, it's another Kmart galvanized impulse buy. <laughs> all of these galvanized things were just all displayed on the one stand and I just got in a bit of a farmhouse frenzy and had to bring them all home with me but then just had no idea what to do with them. So <laughs> yeah, I've I've really, I've got to stop. I've, I've stopped. I'm not buying any more stuff now. So um, yeah, this one's going to be a really easy makeover. All we're going to do, we're not going to paint it in white chalk paint, surprise, surprise. I'm going to use some brown acrylic paint and we're going to create some fake rust all around the bottom and the top of this uh, galvanized tin and yeah I'm just using like a little paint dabber and just dabbing some of that brown acrylic paint all around the bottom just to give it that rust sort of look and with this sort of project we're going to need to build up the paint gradually just like letting it dry in between so I'm dabbing it on fairly thick at the start but then I use my finger just to sort of smudge it out a little bit and then once that first layer is dry we go back in again and um, build up a second layer just until you're happy with the color of the rust and I do this at the top and the bottom and I think originally I only just did this on the outside of the tin but then when I was looking at the tin later I realized it looked a bit weird that there was no rust on the inside so I also brought that rust color down on the inside of the tin as well but I didn't do that in this video you can see me here just putting it on and then smudging it out until I'm happy with the the way it looks and getting that rust look about it you don't want it too uniform because as rust is it goes in patches so yeah so while my rust is drying I've gone in with my I think it was either my Cricut or my Silhouette I can't remember what I used for this one but I created a little stencil saying flower market and then I've also going to be putting established 1876 and number 201 at the bottom of that as well so you'll see that a bit later we're just going to use this stencil and dab on some black acrylic paint over the top and then we'll pull the stencil off just to reveal the letters. 
So you want to make sure that your stencil is really stuck down well, especially considering where I have stuck it over the two rimmed lines going around the bucket. Just make sure if you've got a bucket that's a bit uneven that you stick it down really well and just dab gently. Don't drag it. If you're doing a dab in motion, you've got less chance of the paint bleeding through underneath your letters. So yeah, just dab it gently. And while you're dabbing, that will help to push the stencil down as well. You're over it. I've been done. We're so toxic. Can't get enough. Ooh, I'll go and say it like a mantra. And then just to rough it up a little bit and make it look rustic, <laughs> I'm doing the air quotes, everything's got to be rustic. We're going over it with some light sandpaper and just lightly distressing it, taking off some of those letters, like or taking some of the black off those letters and making it look like it's been there for years and years. So here's the final project for this video and yeah, I'm really happy with the way this has turned out. Definitely looks a, a little bit fancier than it did when we started. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and maybe it's given you some ideas on how you can make over other items that you might have lying around your house. And leave me a comment below and let me know which one was your favourite. Mine, I would say, would have to be the milk can and this little crate, although I do love the apothecary one too. I don't know, I can't pick. <laughs> If you like these types of videos, make sure you subscribe. Subscribing is free and because uh, I've got heaps more of these videos coming up for you guys as well. And I do hope you give them a go. And I do these videos to show you that it's really not that hard. And that's why I love doing them, just to give you guys some inspiration and just to show you that you don't need to be intimidated by doing these sort of projects because, yeah, it, they are really easy and a lot of fun as well. So yeah, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in my next video.